Hello and welcome to the Yorkshire Football Show here on TV Yorkshire. I'm joined this week by Tom Feeney and Sam Bridges, who's back with us. Good to have you back, Sam. Good to be back. Now, plenty to get through. Uh, lots of Leeds United things going on, as always. Takeover rumours galore. Steve Park in the latest man link with the takeover. And Tom, as a Geisley fan, you know all about him. Yeah, and I know that he is you know, a very passionate Leeds United fan. On two separate occasions, he's tried to buy the club in some way and... You know, he's done some great work at Geisley and it would be a shame if he was to leave. But I think he would be in a safe pair of hands if he took over Leeds United. I suppose the question all Leeds fans want to know is, uh, has he got lots of money? Yes, he has. Oh. He floated his company on the stock exchange. I think he's got around £150 million, so more than enough to pay the £30 million to buy the half of Leeds that he wants to do. So he would have the money and you know what, he's a very good chairman at Geisley, so hopefully... If he does take over Leeds, he'll do the same. Around about 150 million, Sam. Is that enough to turn Leeds into a big Premier League force again? Well, quite possibly. I think mean, a lot of the you know, the work it is is done. You know, there's a good youth structure there, and you know the club spent quite a bit of money over the summer. So they they aren't too far off uh, Leeds as long as they can get stability you know, in terms of the management and, and things like that. Of mounting a promotion push, in in my opinion, you know, the championship and, and up and down leagues. So yeah. As Tom said, uh, you know, it's what it needs now, uh, you know, a good, safe pair of hands just to get the club back on its feet and stop the circus that, that comes off the pitch. And then everyone can finally get back to concentrating about what matters, about on the pitch and winning football matches. Well, if you believe what you read in the mirror, and I know I do, uh, link with David Moyes, apparently. That's yeah. Steve Parkins' preferred candidate to take over long term. What do you make of that? He's just had a, a bad time in Spain, hasn't he? Yeah, a bad time. But yeah, you would think that you know, a guy... Uh, with David Moyes, you know, had those years at Everton and then went to Manchester United and then to Spain to drop down into the, the Championship, you know, should Steve Evans not be able to get lead to the Premier League in the in the short term, wouldn't be something that, that David Moyes would be looking at, you know, if there's plenty of money on the on the table then there may be and plenty of backing. But yeah, you wouldn't have thought that, you know, it certainly short to medium term if Steve Parkin took over that, that David Moyes would be uh, a, you know, a candidate for, for Leeds United. But you know, I think Steve Evans is doing a, a decent job at the minute and uh, you know, he laughed off the the, the suggestion and the, and the link in his press conference. But I'm sure he won't be helped by, you know, things like that. You know, you get the takeover done and then you know, decide on, on Steve Evans' future, but at the minute he's doing a, a good job and yeah, keep the distractions to a minimum until the takeover is, is fully done. Well, the current head coach, Steve Evans, has dragged his players in for extra training during the international break and also a friendly away at Wickham on Friday. And ahead of that game, he's been talking to Radio Yorkshire's chief sports commentator, that's Mark Wilson. So now I can't have said I'm not going to get involved in any off the field matters. I see Big Moise, he's been linked to it. I know, I know David extremely well, you know. I, I grew up playing with David. We're, we're distant friends, if I could use that phrase appropriately. You know, but if Leeds United Football Club ever thought that somebody else is a man for their own, it's not me. I've said it, I'll drive out of the shop, throw apart, you know, and I'll cry out and away out, but I'm a big man. If, if someone's better for their own than me, and that's what the people above me think, then let them go on with it. All I can do is try and win football matches for this club. And winning football matches on a regular basis for this football club will be the first in a long time, won't it? So there you go, that's Steve Evans talking to Mark ahead of that friendly against Wickham. Across West Yorkshire lads, uh, Bradford in League One action because the international break is going on, no Premier League or Championship to think about. But Bradford, probably a little bit unlucky to be playing their home game against Crewe. They've got three players out um, on international duty, but their game's still going ahead. Yeah, and it really is unfair on them because you look at them, they're three very good players. You know, James Meredith has been a revelation yet again this season for City. They've got two players on youth loans, but they've been two crucial players. I think Reece Burke has really impressed mm. this season. And, you know, I do think if I'm Slavin Bilic, his manager at West Ham, I'd be thinking for next season he'll have a chance. So I think Phil Parkinson does have a point that he is missing crucial players. And they're a bit unlucky that this game hasn't been postponed. But, you know, trying to get an unbeaten run, keep that going, Sam, I suppose they've just got to get on with it, really. Well, exactly, yeah. You, you can only do what you do. And unfortunately, the, the rules have been slightly unkind to Bradford. But, yeah, they'll get on with it on the pitch on, on Saturday. And, yeah, missing crucial players. But, you know, they are good enough to get all three points against Crew, especially at home at Valley Parade. So, fingers crossed they can, they can do that. We mentioned the international break, we should probably talk about England. Uh, two friendlies yeah. coming up against Spain and then France on Tuesday. And then in March they're taking on Holland and Germany. So some really tough friendlies, probably to test England out after a pretty easy group qualifying for Euro 2016, Sam. Um, will you be watching? Are we bothered about this game? Should um, we be bothered? Yeah, it's been a bit of a, a quiet build-up for, for me this week. I haven't seen too many people 
talking about it certainly you know around radio yorkshire you know there's not been too many people in the office bothered about the game mm. or talking about it you know it's a good chance for roy hodgson to have a look at his side he, he's missing players as well the likes of, of rooney you know jamie vardy with rooney out would have been a, you know, great to see him down the the middle tonight against spain but yeah it, it's you know another chance to to see the likes of, of ross barkley and players like that you know get them in the team and, and get them playing against higher quality international opposition so yeah very you know worthwhile but yeah i'm not, I'm not sure Sure, too many people will, will be that bothered watching it tonight. But yeah, looking forward to see how how the likes of Bark would do again. Rudy won't be playing because um, he's been sort of rested. He's going to play against France. I think a lot of fans wanted him to be dropped. So it's probably good news. But we're all looking forward to seeing Jamie Vardy, Tom, especially you as a non-league yeah. football fan. And he's injured, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, it really is a shame. I think the only thing you've got to say though is obviously if Vardy played in this game and then got a long-term injury. It would scupper his plans to take over Rude van Nistelrooy's record of scoring the most amount of goals in consecutive games. Which Ten games. He is only one off from levelling and then one off from actually breaking mm. it. So I think for Vardy it's a short term loss, but probably and hopefully a long term game. And then France on Tuesday, that should be pretty interesting. Quite a lot of good young players in that French team, and mm. they'll be want to test themselves because England haven't had a testing uh, qualification process, but France haven't really had one at all because they're hosting the tournament. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, you know, France. You know, it seems at the moment when they get to tournament, they they you know they played quite well at the the World Cup, but then capitulated a, a little towards the end. So yeah, another good test for England. Yeah, against a team that's going to have plenty of young players uh, as well and you know that is what Roy Hodgson has been doing and needs to keep doing blooding the youngsters getting them in uh, against the, these kind of sides so yeah looking forward to, to probably that one more than the, the one tonight well, quickly, just to end this show, we're going to look at some of our highlights of the week. We'll start with mine. Um, it's going to be popping up on the screen any time now. A brilliant picture. It was in a few of the papers over the weekend after uh, Crystal Palace beat Liverpool uh, the weekend. There's a great picture of uh, Jurgen Klopp. He seems to be remonstrating with Alan Pardew, and he's just custard pieing him. He's got his hand in his face, and he's not interested in what he had to say. That's worth Googling if you haven't seen that. Tom, what's your highlight? I think mine would be an act of sportsmanship. Briel Mbolo of Basel of master on FIFA 16, someone I really do <laughs> like. He actually, the ball hit off him and it was going to go out for a goal kick. The referee gave a corner and Mbolo actually went to the referee and told him, no, it's hit off me, it's a goal kick. So really good act of sportsmanship. You don't see that very often in football. I was say, and, and his team were losing and they lost in the end. So mm. I think he got in a bit of trouble afterwards, actually. Yeah, I'm sure he did off his <laughs> boss. Yeah, Sam, what about you? Yeah, mine was another outstretched arm, but this time <laughs> Graham Souness in the, the comfort <laughs> of the Sky <laughs> Studio, you know, putting down Thierry Henry and, and really giving him the old Souness eyes, which the likes of Jamie Redknapper has had many times over the last few seasons on Sky. So yeah, that was a, an entertaining one. When Souness talks, don't interrupt. <laughs> With Sky's bosses, I want to Placements. I'm sure we'd all be up for the job. Thank you very much for watching the Yorkshire Football Show. We'll be back next week. Until then, you can subscribe to TV Yorkshire on YouTube.